Humans have been measuring, calculating, and recording the perimeters, areas, and volumes of shapes for well over 5,000 years. That's not all that surprising, though, when you think about it. Ancient civilizations, like the ancient Egyptians, were exactly that. Civilizations. They had things like taxes that were calculated based off of the areas of land that people owned. And an even clearer indicator is the pyramids. I mean, they didn't end up that shape or size by fluke. So it's fair to say they had a good grasp on measurement and geometry. Fast forward then to their successes in mathematics, the ancient Greeks. These people were fascinated with mathematics and their grasp on geometry was incredible. Just look up Euclid's Elements, a book published a few centuries before the Common Era, and you'll find the guts of your high school geometry in there. Yeah, a book published well over 2,000 years ago. You can imagine then the torment caused by the circle. The shape that pops up everywhere in nature. Beads of condensation. The pupil of your eye. And not to mention the big yellow ball in the sky. And yet circles continued just to sit by smugly as they continued to baffle mathematicians. The key to understanding the circle was finding the ratio of its circumference to its diameter, the number we all know today as pi. And that's where a fellow named Archimedes comes in. Hi guys, my name is Kieron. Welcome to my channel. Today, in honor of Pi Day 2021, we're going to be discovering how, in 250 BCE, Archimedes calculated an impressive bounded value of Pi. This calculation of Pi, though not the first, was undoubtedly the best approximation of Pi at the time. A common assumption is that Archimedes would have used trigonometry in the continuous function sense. He didn't. Ancient Greeks didn't know trigonometry like we do today. Sure, they definitely had a firm grasp of ratios of sides of triangles and how that related to, to some certain angles, but in terms of naming these ratios or using them as continuous functions of an angle, no, they weren't there yet. So how did he do it then? Well, he did it through a method that had some serious integral calculus vibes known to Greek mathematicians as the method of exhaustion. So let's go through it. His plan was to bound the value of pi by circumscribing and inscribing polygons about a circle and look to find the ratio of their perimeters to the circle's diameter. The more sides the polygons would have, the closer they were going to be to the actual circumference of the circle. Sounds pretty logical, right? The difficulty, of course, lies in actually calculating the perimeters of the polygons. Let's start off with the circumscribed polygon. He begins with a hexagon, probably because it can be made up of equilateral triangles, uh, so the angles are nice. AB is the diameter, O is the center, and all we need to focus in on is this bit here, where AC is half the length of a side of the hexagon and is tangent to the circle at A. He also remarks that the angle AOC is one third of a right angle, pi over six radians or 30 degrees to us. So looking at this then, the ratio of OA to AC is equal to the ratio of root three to one, which Archimedes approximates as greater than 265, 253. He continues with the ratio of OC to CA is equal to 306 to 153 or two to one. Now he bisects the angle AOC with the line OD, and what we're looking to do is find the ratio of OD to DA, since that will then take the place of our original ratio of OC to CA, and we'll restart the iterative process. From proposition three in the sixth book of Euclid's Elements, known in modern times as the angle bisector theorem, we can now say that the ratio of CO to OA is equal to the ratio of CD to DA. I have an Instagram post going through this theorem if you want to know why that is the case. 
Now, by adding 1 to both sides as ratios OA to OA for the left side and DA to DA for the right side, we get the ratios looking like this, which, when rearranging, we can put in this form. Well, we've now found the ratio OA to AD in terms of a ratio that we know. Therefore, we can use Pythagoras' theorem, comfortably known to the Greeks, to calculate OD, since OA squared plus AD squared is equal to OD squared. This now gives us our new ratio OD to DA. By making this our new starting point, we can go through this exact process again, bisect the angle, use the bisector theorem, then the Pythagorean theorem, and get to the next iteration. Archimedes did this four times, meaning the third of a right angle went to a sixth of a right angle, to a twelfth of a right angle, to a twenty-fourth, and finally making AOG a forty-eighth of a right angle. Remember, this relates to half the length of the side of the circumscribed polygon, so mirroring G, the other side of OA, as H, that would make the angle GOH one twenty-fourth of a right angle making GH one side of a 96-sided polygon. So finally then, we have the ratio of OA to AG is greater than 4,673 and a half to 153, and AB is equal to 2OA, and GH is equal to 2AG. So AB to AG holds the same ratio, and is also greater than 4,673 and a half to 153. So AB to AG times by 96, which would then be the total perimeter, is greater than 4,673 and a half to 153 times 96, or 14,688. Which reveals that the ratio of the perimeter of the polygon to the diameter of the circle to be less than 3 and 667 and a half over 4,673 and a half, which Archimedes approximates to be less than 3 and 1 seventh. So pi can't possibly be greater than 3 and 1 seventh, which it isn't. So Archimedes was off to a great start. So that's the upper bound of pi sorted. What about the lower bound? Let's start with our semicircle again and make a triangle ABC with angle CAB equal to that one third of a right angle again. So we know, and Archimedes knew, that the ratio of AC to CB was root 3 to 1, which again, to get an exact ratio, Archimedes said it was less than 1351 to 780, and the ratio of AB to BC is 1560 to 780, or 2 to 1. Next, we bisect the angle CAB, creating AD and X where AD intersects with CB. And once again, we want to find the ratio that will take the place of our original ratio AB to BC, so that then we may restart the process. So now, angles BAD, XAC, and XBD are equal. And since angles BDA and BCA must be right angles, then triangles ADB, ACX, and BDX are similar, which means that we can come to some helpful conclusions about the ratios of their sides to one another. For instance, the ratio of AD to DB is equal to the ratio of DB to DX, which is also equal to the ratio of AC to CX and the ratio of AB to BX. Which means then that the ratio of AB plus AC to BX plus CX is also equal to the ratio of AD to DB. And BX plus CX is just BC. So now adding our ratios of AC to BC and BA to BC, we get that AD to BD is less than 2,911 to 780. And using Pythagoras' theorem, we find the ratio of AB to BD to be less than 3,013 and 3 quarters to 780. Now we have our new ratio AB to BD that would take the place of our original ratio AB to BC and allow us 
to do the process all over again. Archimedes did this four times, revealing that the ratio of BG to AB is greater than 66 to 2017 and a quarter, and the angle BAG is 1 24th of a right angle, making BG one side of a 96-sided polygon. Following from that then, we see that the ratio of the perimeter of the polygon to the diameter of the circle is greater than the ratio of 6,336 to 2,017 and a quarter, which Archimedes safely approximates to be greater than 3 and 1071ths. Finally then, Archimedes could confidently say that the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter, the number we all know today as pi, to be greater than 3 and 1071ths, but less than 3 and 1070ths. This display of mathematics kind of leaves me speechless. I mean, it's impressive by today's standards, let alone around 2,300 years ago. So thanks very much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more curious content like this from me. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.